Quantum physics has always been a world of wonders and mysteries. After all, in this field, we are regularly confronted with bizarre phenomena that defy our everyday intuition. One of these strange phenomena is called superradiance. It describes a synchronized, collective flash of light from atoms that appears both fascinating and mysterious. While this effect has already been observed in specially designed research systems used by experts, for a long time, superradiance in free space resembled an invisible phantom. If you like, superradiance is one of the most surprising and amazing phenomena in quantum optics. But what does this term actually mean? Well, to understand this, it's helpful to imagine the atom as a microscopic antenna that can emit light, or more precisely, an electromagnetic radiation field under certain conditions. And as soon as we are no longer dealing with just one atom, but with a collection of atoms that are far apart and thermally excited, they radiate independently of each other. Consequently, the intensity of the emitted light is also proportional to the number of atoms. But in the case in which the tiny building blocks are very close together, something amazing happens. In this scenario, the atomic antennas begin to communicate with each other and, as a result, synchronize, causing them to emit light whose intensity increases with the square of the number of atoms. We can think of this phenomenon as the atoms forming a single giant antenna that emits light significantly more efficiently than individual, independent atomic antennas. This effect is collectively referred to as superradiance. And yet, this atomic spectacle also comes with a significant restriction. In fact, superradiance has so far only been observed in optical resonators, or optical cavities, that is, in a special arrangement of mirrors designed to reflect light as often as possible in order to increase the electromagnetic field strength. In principle, however, the reflective effect can also be generated by other components, such as lenses or specially developed structures like waveguides or micro rings. The main function of an optical resonator is to trap and amplify light of certain wavelengths. This, in turn, occurs due to so-called resonance, in which only very specific wavelengths interfere constructively after multiple reflections. For example, they overlap and amplify each other and remain in the cavity. Accordingly, the light henceforth exhibits unique properties that influence its behavior. But if we now detach ourselves from the specific research systems of the scientists, we recognize that superradiance has not yet been demonstrated in free space due to synchronization problems. Well, until now. After all, researchers have now examined this effect under various conditions with the help of theoretical simulations and have registered astonishing differences between the two spatial systems. The fact that the atoms in their scientific mirror cabinet exhibit collective radiation behavior is due to their interaction with photons, in other words, light particles that bounce back and forth between the mirrors of the optical resonator. This interaction thus allows the atoms to synchronize and emit their photon emissions in unison. And remarkably, when excited by an external laser, the light absorption and collective emission of the atoms can balance each other out, causing the system to settle into a stable state with a finite level of excitation. The problem of synchronization in free space. However, as soon as the laser energy exceeds a certain threshold, the system's behavior changes dramatically. The atoms in the ensemble can no longer emit light fast enough to keep up with the incoming laser energy, and they then emit and absorb photons continuously without ever reaching a stable state. Well, at least on paper. Although this shift in the stable state was theoretically predicted decades ago, it's still waiting to be confirmed by experimental observation. But now, researchers from the Laboratoire Charles Fabry and the Institut d'Optique in Paris have taken on the exciting task of studying a collection of atoms in free space that formed an elongated pencil-like cloud and possibly underwent the phase transition of desire. However, the study results sometimes met with great confusion among the other experts. After all, it is tricky, to say the least, for atoms to synchronize in free space. And so it came about that the Colombian theoretical physicist Ana Maria Ray 
together with an international research team, put the results to the test in the course of further investigations, and in doing so, she brought an astonishing fact to light. The experts actually found that atoms can only partially synchronize their emissions in free space, which in turn suggests that the previous free space experiment did not ultimately observe the super-radiant phase transition. In detail, the new simulations were able to reproduce the experimental data and explain why complete synchronization could not take place under the given conditions. But perhaps, and this is the exciting part, the phase transition could occur under different conditions and at higher densities. Although, according to Ray, we would then be entering a realm in which our theoretical methods fail and a true quantum description is required instead. In principle, the solution of complex problems requires the combined efforts of theoretical and experimental physicists. While the theorists predict how systems should behave in their mathematical models and simulations, the practical experts put these predictions to the test with experiments. In other words, this is how the bridge between abstract ideas and real observable phenomena is built. One of the biggest questions in this regard is whether it's possible to generate entangled states in different atomic systems. In an optical cavity, this is possible due to the one-to-one -one interaction of the atoms, but how this plays out in free space is still to be clarified. This is hardly surprising, given that a cavity system can be finely tuned to place the atoms in the desired quantum states, while it's in the nature of things that free space systems are much less easy to control. On the one hand, there is the problem of the frequency induced by the interaction, and not least the fact that the emissions here occur in all possible directions, and not mainly in the optical cavity. The Simulation of Free Space So, one would expect that these factors would change the physics of the system, but, surprisingly, Ray's team found that the truth is quite different. To unravel the background, the researchers carried out a series of theoretical simulations with a model in which each atom was considered a dipole that absorbs and emits both the photons from the laser and the light emitted by the other atoms. According to the experts, this was all the more challenging because the number of states in the cavity increases linearly, whereas in free space it can increase exponentially with the size of the system. Ultimately, the experts used their model to analyze the properties of the entire atomic cloud. The laser beam acted as a smooth wave that imposed a specific phase pattern on the atoms, thereby controlling how they interacted with each other. Exactly how these factors influenced the behavior of the system was in turn reconstructed based on various conditions, including different laser powers and atomic densities. According to Ray, the simulation showed that a so-called mean field approximation, which greatly reduces the complexity by treating the atoms as classical magnets, is sufficient to reproduce the physics. However, to ensure consistent results, the model was then validated using more complex approaches. And ultimately, the scientists found that although the free space experiment was consistent with the cavity model, the two systems behaved very differently within a narrow range of laser intensities and atomic densities. This is because as soon as the laser power increased above a certain threshold, the collective effects in free space that led to super radiance in the optical cavity disappear. The atoms appear less as a coordinated group and more as independent radiators. However, the scientists emphasize that their results open up completely new avenues of research in quantum physics and once again underscore the importance of collaboration between experimental and theoretical experts. However, the fact that the world of super radiance still has some secrets in store is shown by the series of research conducted by Farouk Maivar from the University of Innsbruck a few months ago. Published in the journal Physical Review Letters, the theoretical physicist had considered two collections of atoms in a cavity to explore how these two atomic ensembles can simultaneously emit light. In this respect, there are basically two different possibilities. Either the two collective atomic antennas complement each other to form a single supergiant antenna that emits light even more powerfully, or the networks compete with each other in a destructive way, ultimately suppressing the super-radiant light emission. 
The latter occurs in particular when the two collections have the same number of atoms. But Maivar also found cases in which the two giant antennas emit light that embodies a superposition of the two types and exhibits an oscillating character. And this time too, the theoretical predictions are to be tested in modern cavity experiments, and the results could be used in a new generation of so-called super-radiant lasers in the future. And now you're welcome to click on the subscribe button. Press the thumbs up and subscribe now so you'll never miss a new video from us again. We'll see you soon.